Hello class, I'm just wanting today to show you how to tone a piece of bond paper. Uh, the bond paper, I've got the paper here in front of me. It's going to be a Strathmore layout bond paper. Um, I know some of you have it, some of you probably don't, but this is the 18 by 24. Um, I would prefer you to work with grounds on this paper. It works definitely way better than the uh, white charcoal paper. And today I'm going to show you how to tone a piece of it. So uh, when we get into our last few real long drawings, and there will be a master copy that we will take all the way to its conclusion, uh, like what we've done so far, we'll be laying it out with three values, we'll put gradations on it, then we're going to go back in and we're going to develop accents and highlights, and, and we're going to be rendering core shadows and reflective lights. And on this paper, it can be done very nice. So what I'm going to do is turn this around and the bond paper is like this. It's real, it's kind of thin. Um, some of you aren't familiar with it. It's kind of a thin paper. It's semi see-through and you wouldn't think you could put charcoal on it. Charcoal works really nice on it. So is what we're going to do is I'm using I'm using this, um, hold on just a moment. What I'm doing is using this charcoal, and uh, I know a lot of you have it. Um, you don't just have to use this charcoal, but it does work well. Uh, sometimes you can use the compressed soft charcoal, which both of them are. This does veer a little into kind of pastel between charcoal kind of pastel mix. So it's a real nice soft uh, uh, charcoal to work with. Uh, the other thing that I have is a little sandpaper block. Um, I did have that on the list uh, for the charcoal. And if you don't want to go out and get a sandpaper block, you can surely just use a piece of sandpaper. It works out really good too. I've got a kneaded eraser, which I'll talk about, show you, and just a regular rubber eraser, which I'm sure all of you have, works good for this as well. So the first part of this is taking the sandpaper and you're going to hold it at an angle and you're going to powder this charcoal on here. Now the, the goal of it, I probably won't show you the whole piece of paper, but I'm going to show you most of it. Uh, the goal of this is to get this piece of paper a good middle tone. Uh, the middle tone is important, as you're finding out when we work with three values. If your middle tone is weak, meaning too light, your lights don't have any impact, or you don't have a, a big range of lights. Your range of lights become very narrow if you have a light middle tone. So if you're going to err in any direction when you're putting a tone on a piece of paper, error on that being a little too dark of a middle tone than too light of a middle tone. Now this, what I'm putting on here now will probably give me a pretty good mid-tone and I'm going to start rubbing it in a minute and you'll see how this is going to work. But I'm going to show you this part of the paper. I'm going to add just a little more and if I need to, of course, I will build up as I need it. The best way to do it with the sandpaper is to keep this in one spot on the sandpaper and just keep rubbing it. Otherwise, the sandpaper just eats up the, eats up the charcoal. Um, so then is what you need is a piece of paper towel. Take the piece of towel, fold it a couple of times, get it to where it's even and flat at the bottom. Now, one of the only tricks to this is doing this don't press hard because these are chips of uh, sharp pieces of compressed charcoal. So if you press hard, it's going to leave little sharp lines in it. So you, at the beginning, you barely press at all. I'm just, just lightly dragging it over the surface. The other thing that you want to do, as you see me doing, is you want to go in circular motions. Circular motions then will get rid of any direction to the stroke that's there and it'll give you a nice ultimate even surface. Now once I get it somewhat ground you could say those chips are breaking down you could see them 
and I'm trying to keep the sharp edges off the paper by not pressing too hard. If you press too hard, they'll leave marks. But then as I get it down a little bit, I'm going to press a little harder, not much. And as you can see, it's developing into a halfway decent middle tone. If it's a little dark in one area, I could rub it a little more. The idea isn't to rub it too much. It lifts better if it's not rubbed to death. Um, so you want to, you know, you do want it even, as even as you can get it. And so like on mine at the moment, I need to use a little bit more uh, in certain places. And so that's what I'll do. I'll just add a little bit more. You would probably have to do the same with yours. And then I want to show you something with how the eraser works with this paper. And that's the nice part about working with the bond paper is how it erases and then builds up. Um, with this, then you don't really need to use vine charcoal. It's the vine charcoal that gets so messy. Um, this you can control much easier. Uh, you can even do your preliminary layout with the um, charcoal pencil. If you use a soft one, not a hard one, you'd want to use like a 6B or a 5B pencil. Um, and it works out really nice. So I'm going to finish this up. So I'm going to, I added just a little more. I'm going to bring it in the circular motions. I, I can lightly feel it grinding under there. So I don't want to press too hard again, as I mentioned. And now I'm going to press a little harder. I'm pressing, I'm, I'm, the other thing I'm doing is I'm pushing away from me because this paper can wrinkle easily. So if I bring it in, it can wrinkle it as you'll find. So I'm pressing always away at the edges. Really watch that with yours. So many of us, myself included, as I go this way, I'm not going to do this top part, but I would pull outward, always push towards the edge out so the paper doesn't wrinkle. So this is a really decent middle tone. I think the lights would show up. I could get darker lights and lighter lights on this surface. So anyways, you would do with yours the whole piece of paper. So anyways, again, unlike the vine charcoal, once that's on there, it's pretty good. It's not all going to powder off on you. Okay. So with a kneaded eraser, um, kneaded erasers, of course, as all of you know, are called kneaded erasers because if you knead them a little bit, they get just a little warmer. You don't want to knead them forever. Uh, some people hold them nervously doing it and they get real hot and sticky Then they don't erase well. But they do erase better if they're a little bit warm and you can shape them. And so I can take a shape uh, and if I don't press too hard on this, uh, I can come up with a light that's not real white as I'll show you. So I could do this and I can come up with an area that's not really a pure white. But see, it'll hold on there real well. If I need to, I can take that, like say, if this is my initial light, I could, I could do it this way, my overall light. If it's too light, I could go back and lightly rub over it and it'll get a little bit darker for you. Uh, but you can control it. I can control it much better than you can control um, vine charcoal with the ground. So now that, that's definitely not a pure white. Now, if I take a rubber eraser, you can control it real well. And I could go over that. And now I just put an extreme highlight on top of my light. So with this value, you can see my off white. You can see my lighter light. And with this, it'll, and it's what's so nice with the bond paper, it'll bring it right down to a pure white. So, I mean, I can erase out like this. So, so you have choices. So that's the beautiful thing with the bond paper. You come up with a beautiful white where with the, uh, the charcoal paper, that doesn't happen. So one way with your lights, I could just lift them all out like this. Whatever my light pattern does, I could take my time and lift them out. And then I could also then go over it evenly. This, this rubber eraser is old. They normally wouldn't do that if you have yourself a really good one. But is what you could do is take your lights in the drawing and make, make them all white like I've got there. And then go back over them, which I do sometimes, 
then go back over them, lightly do this, and then and then you got a really even um, average light. And so it comes out really nice that way. And so that's what I would suggest. I would lift the lights and then go back into your shadows. Um, and then on top of that, you're able to gradate and I'm able to build lighter, 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 and lighter into that, um, into that area. Um, so you can come up with various types of lights. The other thing, of course, is adding darks. And so you can take this and I would, I would necessarily draw with this, but if you have a charcoal pencil, you can lightly draw in your design with this, whatever it's gonna be, right? And then if you mess up, of course, just go into it, not an eraser, and you can just rub it in, okay? So most of us won't get a drawing right the first time, so you just kind of lightly rub it in. The other thing people do on this paper is you can draw with, to lay out your drawing if you don't wanna use what you did to tone it, the same thing. Um, you can use vine charcoal and lay out your drawing with vine charcoal. Do not add values with vine charcoal. Add them with the comp soft compressed charcoal because it will not hold on this paper. So anyways, you would go after your darks like that and then you could begin to block those in. So if I start to take a little area and begin to block it out with a dark, Again, when you rub into this, it, a lot of times it gets darker. Um, so you wanna be careful. Um, you can rub with your finger, you could rub with a blending stump. And again, as all of you know, you don't wanna go pitch black right away. You wanna leave room. So ultimately you can go back and develop extremely strong darks and then gradate how the gradations are gonna be and develop them, uh, but this paper will hold it. It'll hold a multitude of grays. If you're working with a charcoal pencil, uh, that you can get a lot of subtlety and an amazing amount of detail. So basically that's it with the uh, preparation of the paper. Now, if you're working with uh, charcoal paper or the paper that I had brought to class that you had picked up because you don't have bond paper, is what you would have to do is take the vine charcoal and powder it on there, the size that you're gonna be doing the drawing, um, especially as we get into the classes that come. Because sometimes it's nice to start with a mid-tone, add your darks and lift your lights, especially if the middle tone is the predominant. So is what you do is powder on the vine charcoal, lightly rub it in, draw with the vine charcoal, uh, and then you're able to lift it back down to the lights because the vine charcoal won't stain the paper and it won't get on there to the point where you can't lift it. But on the charcoal paper, the paper I gave you, do not start it with compressed charcoal like this paper. This paper, you have to start it with compressed charcoal. So happy drawing, and I will see you in the next demonstration.